when you install the application, you see this folder. Uh, double click on the setup folder, setup file, to install the program. Now press install when it asks you to install. This will create desktop shortcuts and shortcuts in the program files as well as shortcuts in the start menu. So here's the shortcut on the desktop. It also opens automatically after installation. Okay. Here's a main window. Here's a calendar to pick the date. And from here you can view bookings that are on that date. Now there aren't any other ones. And this is the date that's displayed on the, ca on the calendar. There's also the room name. And these are four rooms that are currently in the database. Time began and this is all the rest of the book. This shows details for the booking. This is the first booking, previous booking, next booking, and last booking. And finally here's the delete button. There's also a scaling algorithm. So if the, if the program is displayed on a very large display and you want to scale it, everything zooms in. And on a small display, everything zooms out. Uh, to add a client, click on clients and press add clients. You get the following window. And there's also tooltips to show what is required that shows enter first name this is required so for it Peter and surname tenders. there's also validation in these text boxes in that you can't enter anything other than letters so for example if I load up the keyboard and I show that if I try to enter numbers, letters, symbols, I can't do any of these. If the person's internal, you can take this box and all these will blanked out, you cannot click on them. No you can. If the person's internal, there's no need to enter all this information and all his bookings will be free. So we create two clients, one internal, so I'll call it Peter I, and one external, and I'll end that with E, so we know which one's which. So we'll make this guy internal, we'll give him a Peter. There's also validation on the email, to prevent an incorrect email, for example, problems like this. Or problems like this, or even problems like this, or pretty much any wrong email. If the person's in a chess, you need to purchase the order number, and you, can, and you can click here. Now, if you click save and close, it will save all your work. If you revert and close, it would close the window and delete any changes. So click save and close, it says save to give me confirmation of the message. Now this should appear here. If you click client and edit and delete clients. And this guy appears here. And these are other two clients that I've created earlier. I'll delete both of them and I'll show you how they actually work. If you close this, open it again, they've actually been deleted. And even if you put in the whole program again, they are actually deleted. Uh, you can also edit here. So if I made a Peter or QA, or, and I press save changes, and press OK, and if you open up again, the changes are in fact saved. You can add a room by clicking on the rooms.
else in there. And then click add a room. And in the room name, let's call it uh, meeting room 5. And you can check here if there's a projector or not. Capacity, you can enter anything. But if you enter less than 20, so let's say 5, it will tell you you can't do that. And also if you try not to enter this, or this, Okay, and you can also undo in these um, if you try not to enter the capacity. I'll still tell you that. And if you enter above six, uh, 500, so 500 is the limit. So it's greater than 500, so 501. There you go. And let's put a reasonable value of 500. And then press save and close. Let's try the revert button. If you want to lose all your changes, press no, it will give you back that screen. Yes. It's a very changes and if you go here, the room isn't there. If you go again. One hundred. And say that close. It gives you a confirmation message. Press OK. Now you can view the room in the rooms button here and then edit and delete rooms. There it is. And let's delete a couple of these to show that it works. Let's delete. Let's delete it and let's delete that one as well. You can also navigate through these there. That's uh, first, previous, next, and last. If we make changes to number 3 and the capacity to 101 and the projector and we press save and we open this again this is saved and we can show that if we open the whole program again there you go the room also will appear here meeting room 3 and that will show any bookings there uh, to add a booking, press on Kings, add new booking. Um, this is the date that's currently selected in the calendar. Now, if we change the calendar to 22nd, and the calendar by default displays the today's date, we can see that it has actually changed. Now, if we click on room, let's do the room we just created. The time we can any time, but if we have the time finished before that, we get an error, or at the same time, we also get an error. Now for client, we've got this person that we created the internal one. For an internal client, as you can see, the price is zero pounds, even if there are repeats. So like, even if there are these, all of these repeats, it still says zero pounds. But at this screen, if the client is listed here, you can press on add new client and then refresh the list again. So if I click add new client, let's call it max R uh, E for external. That is an external, so A, C, landline number. So you can only enter numbers in this field. They try and enter letters or symbols. You can't do so. You also can't enter this. So if I try it on. And a land number. Same, same thing happens. If you try and enter any other number, it just doesn't let you put it in a text box. Email. There's also email validation which I talked about earlier.
and let's make him an interest guy. Put give him a flash of board number one, one, two. Okay. Press save it close. Okay. Now if you refresh the list, it will appear there. And it know that this guy is external. If the event is repeated, we repeat it every day for two to three days. It just increases by sixty each time. And if you select that, that goes back to the Let's try without repeat. Let's see how it works. Let's save and close. As for username and password, and this will be discussed later on, but what I've set a default password as AA and AA as the password. You can also go through these uh, these fields by the tab line, which will make it easier. And that's shown in here. Tab, there you go. Okay. So, but these are accepted. Now on this screen, if you click on room name, and I think it was room meeting room three, which shows the time began, time finished, and all of these details about the guy. Now, if you want to view invoices, click on the view invoices button. And this will show the invoice of this booking. Click there. And maximize the screen. You can see the price is sixty pounds. Room name. It has no repeats. Time began at nine. Time finished at twelve. That's the date and there is this address. And there's Alan's Crofts address. And this can be printed. There you go. I'm just set the printer and select print. You can also export it as an Excel PDF or Word, so if we export it to a PDF to try it out, let's put that on the desktop. Okay, so if we click here, it shows the PDF here, and it shows all its details, which can be printed out. The invoice can also be exported uh, into other formats like Excel, PDF, and Word. Now, now we have that booking in meeting room three. If we try and delete the client, so that's Max E. While we still have that booking, it should give us a message. It shouldn't let us do this. If we press delete here, it says the client is already booked for the room, please delete that booking first and then delete the client. Okay. And the same thing for the room. If we try and delete the room that this guy's booked in, so meeting room three, we should be able to delete it. See, there you go. But we can still delete another room. Now, if we try and delete this booking, AA and AA. Okay, the booking is deleted. Now, if we go here, client, and edit client, we can now delete the person. Same for the room. And there you go, room deleted. As you can see, the room has been deleted here. The program does have clash detection inside it, so it stops any clashes occurring in the same room at the same time at the same date. So if we add a new booking, let's say meeting room one from 8:30 to 10. Let's make it 9 to 10. Okay. Any client, and we save it. Let's try and add another booking at the same time. So 9 to 10. Same person. 
was already a booking at those times. We had tried before that, I eight. That was also a clash at that time. If it was try nine thirty to ten, it was also a clash. But also This, this will work because it's outside time. Repeat bookings also have the same effect. So if we do this yesterday, and the room of time began 9 to 10, right, and we repeat this every day twice. Now there, there should be a clash in that period. Save and close. So at that point, it tells you there's a clash. And then, users, let's move on to users. Now, users are used to uh, for authorization to prevent anyone without authorization adding a booking or deleting a booking. So earlier. When someone tried to add, when I tried to add a booking, it asked for username and password. When I tried to delete the booking, it asked for username and password. So if I click here, enter AA and AA, it would it would work. So if I try AAA, it wouldn't work. Or even that. It will say user accepted, but it cannot delete at the blank entry. Uh, you, the username and passwords are stored in the database very securely. They are stored with the highest security possible in Visual Studio 2012, which is SHA 512. And it's also have used parameterization to prevent SQL injection. For any new user, let's call this and the password. Let's call it password. And if you don't enter the password again correctly, we'll give you an error message. Okay. Looks like we entered it incorrectly. There you go. Now you have to enter an existing username and password, prevents anyone authorized trying to create a user. So if we use AA and AA and submit, user accepted and saved. So now if I create a booking, I use I press submit user accepted. And now the booking has appeared here. Finally there's help. When you click on help and the help file, so open up a PDF of this. And this is the user guide. And these are all links which can link to the user guide. You can print this off, save a copy, or open up the full view. We can sign in and share it online. Now let's close that. And there's also a help and help video which will display this video that is currently being viewed right now. An important thing with programs like these which can hold quite important information which are non-recoverable is that the database can be backed up. So if you click on SQL Server Management and then we sh should be able to back it up to the cloud and then we could be able to restore it from the cloud. So if the computer crashes, the backup will still be stored on the cloud and it will not be lost. They also have Dropbox installed on this computer, which is here, which is just the basic installation here. And this is where the backup file will be stored.
and this window will open. Just press connect. And on the right hand pane and the left hand pane will show the databases. And currently the only database installed is the Allenscroft database. To back it up, right click on it and then uh, tasks. And then click on backup. Now ask for backup type for we'll, we'll call it that. Backup expired. And then now it will back up to this location. And we can add another backup location add to the Dropbox folder. There you go. Let's call that. Okay, and now press OK. Now the file appears in the Dropbox folder, which shows that it has been up to date and it's all synced. Now let's say. We had to reinstall the uh, SQL Server Manager and reinstall the whole program again because the computer failed. But we still have this backup. So let's say we delete this. Okay. Let's we'll close the existing connections. Oh, I need to close this program also. Okay. Now, we need to restore the database and we'll restore it from that file. Device for a file from the media add. Yes. Dropbox. And there it is. OK. Then press OK. Now this is the last map I've taken. And this time. Now press OK. And then it says database fully restored. So now if we open up the program again. Now if you click on Alan's Craft, the database has clearly been restored. Thank you.